Now that we're writing code for the PIC32, we're not using the standard GCC compiler. We're using a specific modification of it from the company microchip called XC32-GCC. So we call this a cross compiler because we're still compiling the code on our computer, but we're compiling it to run on a different processor. So the executable that we come up with in the end, we can't run on our computer because it's not a PIC32 MIPS-based CPU. Um, so whenever you see something that says cross-compiler, that just means using one computer to compile code to run on another. The steps look very similar to what we saw before. We have our preprocessor. So we take our C code and we evaluate the, uh, the pound defines and the pound includes. So taking the libraries that we've written and taking the libraries that have come with um, all of the other XC32 code that Microchip has provided, and you know reshuffling them around, deleting the comments, formatting, and that gets passed to the compiler. So the specific compiler now is using um, the MIPS32 assembly language. So our C code is being turned into assembly. In this case, we can look up a PDF of the MIPS32 assembly language, and it'll show us what assembly commands are available. There's something like 128 or maybe more um, individual commands, and most of them are pretty simple. It says, you know, go load this variable from, from memory, go add these two variables, and so on. This is specific to MIPS. That's what makes it different from, say, the ARM um, or the uh, x86 style processors. Okay, the output of the compiler goes to the assembler. Um, and of course, the assembler uh, makes the relocatable uh, code. So now this is in machine language. This is a uh, .o file that we can't read. Uh, it's in binary. Um, all of the functions are given a spot in memory that are relative to each other, but they haven't been given the final address that they will appear in um, like the PIC32 memory. So that gets sent to the linker, and the linker uh, has the job of actually taking all the functions from all the C files, uh, placing them in very specific final physical locations of memory. And in our case, we're using a special linker file called uh, bootloaded.ld. The bootloaded.ld file, um, which at some point you'll open up, is just a text file, but it lists uh, specific locations in memory to either stick things or to avoid putting things by the linker so that we don't overwrite the bootloader that is already on the PIC32. If you overwrote the bootloader, then the PIC could never reprogram itself. So we need to make sure that we don't you know, overwrite those um, specific parts of memory. One, um, the output of the uh, uh, linker um, program is an ELF file, which we haven't seen before. An ELF file is a very long file that says what every uh, piece of memory inside of the PIC should be after this process has completed. Now, usually our code doesn't fill up all of memory, so the ELF file is full of zeros. Um, but one interesting thing we can do with the ELF is we can send it to um, a program called xc 32 ob uh, what's it called? Obj dump, object dump. And what that does is it undoes the uh, binariness of the uh, file. So th this code um, looks a lot like object code. It's just been given final addresses in memory. And it turns it back into what we call the disassembly. This is a very neat file. Um, it's a it's a dot dis file that shows our C code next to the assembly code that it was turned into. So we'll be able to look at the disassembly and see exactly what the compiler did when when we said you know C equals A plus B. How many assembly lines did that take? How long will that code take to run? Because we can count the assembly lines that it made. The ELF file. Uh, is um, not the thing that we want in the end, though, because it's so big, it contains all of 
the memory in the pick and what it should be, and a lot of those would be zero. So we'll take the elf file, and this is a, a special step, and we'll send it to uh, xc32-bin to hex. And the output of this is a .hex file. The .hex file is um, now human-readable ASCII text again, and it contains instructions that are sent to the PIC over the USB cable for the PIC to be able to program itself. So it contains the code that we've written, but only the necessary parts of memory that we need to change to put that code inside of the PIC. So the hex then goes to the NU32 uh, utility, Um, and the utility opens up the serial port, it opens up the hex file, it reads lines from the hex file, sends it to um, the PIC, the PIC in bootloader mode, then uses the hex to program itself, and then when you reset the PIC, the code runs. So the compilation process of running xc32-gcc um, goes all the way through the hex, uh, sorry, it goes all the way through the elf file. Um, then we would have to call bin to hex to make the hex file, then we would call the utility to send it to the PIC. And um, in one of the earlier homeworks, you had to type out manually all the instructions to get xc32-gcc to run. That was very annoying. So we will now be using uh, a make file to do that, which types it all for us. And the make file will also call bin to hex and can also call the utility for us. So that uh, with much less amount of typing, we can uh, save our code, call the make file, and upload it to the pick.